Hello everybody, my name is Talara and I would like to welcome you to our newest Let's Play series of Dragon Age Inquisition. Dragon Age is one of my favorite video game series of all time, but it has been a while since I've played any of the games. So on the channel, as you may or may not already know, we have previously completed playthroughs of both Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age 2. If you want to check those out, I'll put some links down in the description below. But it only makes sense after playing both of those to play the third game in the series, Dragon Age. Dragon Age Inquisition. So here we are, and the game starts off with quite a bang, which is fun. Um, and I am going to do something a little different for this playthrough. It's worth noting that I have played this game before, however, I played the heck out of it when it came out at launch, and I never revisited the game. So not only is my memory going to be a little hazy coming back into this, but I've actually never played any of the DLCs, so it's going to be really fun to experience some of that brand new content for you guys. Another thing I want to do is I want to make a complete completely different character. In my first playthrough, I played as a female elf, which is usually my inclination to do so in fantasy games, but I want to do something really different and make a female Kunari this time around. The Kunari are a race of horned giants who follow a strict religious text known as the Kun. Those who have abandoned its principles are known as Talvashoth and often work as mercenaries. Kunari characters get a bonus plus 10% physical damage resistance. And then, um, Again, to reference my previous playthroughs, we did Dragon Age Origins as a warrior, we did Dragon Age 2 as a rogue, and so it is only fitting that we do Dragon Age Inquisition as a mage. Now, the mage and Kunari combo is especially interesting, of course, because of how the Kunari treat their mages. In all societies, mages are not treated very well, hence the current conflict that's happening in the game. But in particular, um, the Kun very much treated their mages as slaves. They are bound, literally bound physically, and um, are given really no freedom at all. So, uh, we are actually going to start the game as a Tal the Shoth mage. Followers of the strict religious philosophy of the Kun, the Kunari, appeared like a tidal wave to the north of Thetis 300 years ago. You are Tal the Shoth, a Kunari who has rejected the Kun and never even lived in Kunari lands. You have earned a place within the Valokas mercenary company as its mage, possessing abilities that would have made you a pet slave among your own people, ignoring the fearful looks you receive from those around you. Most recently, the company was sent to the Chantry Conclave, Iron Swords meant to get, keep the peace, a task that has gone horribly wrong. So there you have it, that will be our character, a female Kunari mage, which is rather exciting. And we are going to import a world state. If you guys aren't aware of Dragon Age Keep, it's a really interesting feature that allows you to essentially import your decisions that you made in Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age 2 into Dragon Age Inquisition. So before I started recording this video, I went into Dragon Age Keep. I imported all the decisions that we made in our playthrough of Origins and 2. And so we will import that into Inquisition and all of our major decisions will be able to be carried forward, which is rather cool. All right, so we're all good here. Let's move into the game. And we head straight into the best part of any RPG, character creation. Let's make our character. <laughs> All right, so after some customization, here is Talara the Kunari. She's got a few scars because her life has not been easy as part of a mercenary company. But I think she looks pretty cool with her horns and her pointy ears and her piercing blue eyes. So let's accept our changes and hop right into the game. Of course, we will name our character Talara. Surprise, surprise.
Oh, great. Oh, we start the game with spiders? I hate spiders so much. And here we go. Within the first five minutes, we've got giant spiders. Run, Talara, run! Whew. Mysterious ghostly figure saved us from the spiders, but it looks like we are now passed out with some soldiers surrounding us. Waking up in a cell, it appears. Honestly, totally better than being with the spiders. I'll take cell over spiders any day of the week. <laughs> Fortunately, it appears we are in irons. Look who it is! Our Tell girl Liliana! Me why we shouldn't kill you now. The I mean, you too, Cassandra, but... Everyone who attended is dead. Except for you. You think I did it? You think I'm responsible? Explain this. I... can't. What do you mean, you can't? I don't know what that is. Or how it got there. You're lying! We need her, Cassandra. I'm confused. I don't understand. Do you remember what happened? How this began? I remember running. Things were chasing me. Not and things. Then... Spiders. A woman. A woman? She reached out to me but then oh. go to the forward camp liliana i will take her to the rift what did happen it will be easier to show you All right, show and tell. Lead the way, Miss Cassandra. Oh, well, that doesn't look good. We call it the Breach. It's a massive rift into the world of demons that grows larger with each passing hour. It's not the only such rift, just the largest. All were caused by the explosion at the Conclave. An explosion can do that? This one did. Unless we act, the breach may grow until it swallows the world. Each time the breach expands, your mark spreads. And it is killing you. Oh, great. It may be the key to stopping this, but there isn't much time. Let's do a little investigation. How could it stop this? You say it may be the key. To doing what? Closing the breach. Whether that's possible is something we shall discover shortly. It is our only chance, however. And yours. You still think I'm guilty? You still think I did this? To myself? Not intentionally. Something clearly went wrong. And if I'm not responsible? Someone is. And you are our only suspect. You wish to prove your innocence? This is the only way. All right. Do I have a choice then? So I don't really have a choice about this. None of us has a choice. They have decided your guilt. They need it. The people of Haven mourn our most holy, divine Justinia, head of the Chantry. The Conclave was hers. 
It was a chance for peace between mages and Templars. She brought their leaders together. Now they are dead. We lash out like the sky, but we must think beyond ourselves, as she did. Until the breach is sealed. There will be a trial. I can promise no more. Come. It is not far. Where are you taking me? Your mark must be tested on something smaller than the breach. Alright, so here we are, guys. We are officially into the game. One thing you can tell right away is how tall I am. Look how tall I am compared to Cassandra, who I feel like is not a short woman. Uh, but here we go. Looked like we just unlocked a bunch of codex entries, so I actually want to go check those out first. One thing that I love about these games is the lore, so we will be doing a lot of story time in this playthrough. Hopefully that is cool with you guys. So first we're going to learn about the Vashoth. The Kunari and Parabalan live under the Kun, a religious and philosophical doctrine dictating every aspect of their society. Talara Adar's parents left that restrictive life before she was born, settling in the free marches and raising their child outside the Kun. Kunari brought up outside their society are still feared, shunned, or misunderstood by most people in the South. The average citizen of Orle or Ferelden assumes they are cold-blooded thralls or vicious bandits. When Talara manifested a gift for magic, her parents arranged for a mage among the Tal Vashoth to teach her how to control her talents. She joined the Volkas Mercenary Company as a young adult, making a name for herself over the years as a capable and powerful mage. Talara was hi hired to provide protection of the Conclave as a neutral party to stand between the Templars and human mages. After the disastrous explosion at the Temple of Sacred Ashes that killed the Divine, Adar was the only survivor. So Adar is me, that's my last name. Rumors that the mysterious mark on her hand is a sign of the Maker's favor were spread by those who claimed they saw the Divine Prophet Andraste herself lead Adar out of the Fade. For some reason, this little tutorial about movement is not going away, so it's kind of, uh, blocking my view here, but ignoring that. Let's read an entry about Cassandra. I am fully aware of the intent behind your predecessor's declaration. Lord Seeker Lambert pried the Templars away from Chantry control and led them into an assault upon all mages, for reasons you both find justified. I, however, am uncertain when the Seekers of Truth went from guarding against injustice to perpetrating it. If you truly believe that is not the case, I suggest you look out a window at the chaos this war has caused, and ask yourself if Thetis will recover even if you are victorious. I remain at Divine Justinia's right hand and will stay there even if you brand me traitor. I'm sorry, but there is too much at stake to swerve from the path we willingly followed at the Chantry's foundation. From a letter by Seeker Cassandra Pentagast to Lord Seeker Lucius Corin. And speaking of Divine Justinia, we have an entry about her as well. Formerly the revered mother Dorothea of Orlais, Divine Justinia V rose to power after the death of Divine Beatrix III in the year 934 of the Dragon Age. Little is known of Dorothea's background before she joined the Chantry as an initiate, but she proved to be a liberal and daring thinker, willing to take a former bard and lay sister, Liliana, as a close advisor. A headstrong devotion to her own agenda and rumored support of the Mage Rebellion earned her no small dislike from the powerful priests long used to controlling access to the Divine. In the year 940 of the Dragon Age, Divine Justinia called a summit, intending to negotiate a truce between the Mage Rebellion and the Templars splintered from the Chantry. The Divine Conclave was held at the Temple of Sacred Ashes, the most holy place in Thetis. Before a resolution could be reached, a cataclysmic explosion destroyed the Conclave, consumed the Temple, rent the sky, and shattered the world's hopes for peace. Divine Justinia V perished in the Temple of Sacred Ashes. The Chantry flounders, leaderless in the wake of her death, and its fate grows increasingly uncertain. If order is not restored to Thetis, Justinia V might be remembered as the Chantry's final divine. So that's some great background about the characters we've been introduced to so far. Um, there, as you can see, there's a bunch more entries here that we can check out. But before we do that, I want to try to move so I can get this little tutorial off my screen. So let's just walk across the bridge here. Here we go. All right. Open the gate. We are heading into the valley. Alright, just me and Cassandra heading forward. Let's 
some army guys here. That's on fire. Hi guys, hello. All right, now that we got the tutorials off to our screen, let's head back to the codex for a little bit more lore reading, shall we? First up, we have some information about this conclave. It has been a year of little more than chaos. Yes, the mages voted to dissolve the Circle of Magi, but I will point out, this vote came only after increased restrictions were placed on them following the unfortunate events in Kirkwall. What other choice did they have? Yes, the Templar Order abandoned their duties and elected to pursue the mages to bring them back in line, but after a thousand years in which their sole role was the mages' keepers, what else could one expect? They envisioned the war over quickly, a single battle that would see the mages' resolve crumble, after which they would meekly return to confinement. That did not happen. This conflict could drag on forever, with advantage on neither side. Both Templars and Mages see this, and thus they have agreed to come to the Conclave. This is our chance. Words need to be said which have not been said. A compromise must be reached because there is no other choice. I believe this with all my heart. I'm not without fault in all this. Perhaps I pushed too hard for reform, or not hard enough. The Maker has seen fit to give me another chance, and I will not squander it. The Temple of Sacred Ashes is where together we will make history, and with luck we will be remembered kindly for it. From the journals of Divine Justinia V, Dragon 941. So we had an entry about the Kunari as well, for those of you guys who need a little background about my race. The people of the Kun are perhaps the least understood group in Thetis. The Kunari wars were brutal, but so was the Chantry Schism. So was the fall of the Imperium. Some of this mis misunderstanding is an accident of nature. The race we call Kunari are formidable. Nature has given them fierce horns and strange eyes, and the ignorant look on them and see monsters. Some is an accident of language. Few among the Kuhn's people speak the common tongue, and fewer speak it well. In a culture that strives for mastery, to have only a passable degree of skill is humiliating indeed, and so they often keep quiet among foreigners out of shame. But much of it is a result of the culture itself. The Kunari view their whole society as a single creature, a living entity whose health and well-being are the responsibility of all. Each individual is only a tiny part of the whole, a drop of blood in its veins, important not for itself, but for what it is what it is to the whole creature. Because of this, the Kunari most outsiders meet belong to the army, which the Kun regards as if it were the physical body, arms, legs, eyes, and ears, the things a creature needs in order to interact with the world. One cannot get to know a person solely by studying his hand or his foot, and so one cannot truly meet the Kunari until one has visited their cities. That is where their mind and soul dwell. In Saharan and Parvalan, one can truly see the Kunari in their entirety. There, the unification of the Kunari into a single being is most evident. Workers, whom the Kun calls the mind, produced everything the Kunari require. The soul, the priesthood, seeks a greater understanding of the self, the world, and exhorts the body and mind to continually strive for perfection. The body serves as the go-between for the mind, the soul, and the world. Everyone and everything has a place, decided by the Kun, in which they work for the good of the whole. It is a life of certainty, of equality, if not individuality. And it's it's such a very interesting culture, the Kunari. It's one of the reasons why I just love these games is it's it's just full of lore and opportunity. And we haven't had the chance to actually explore a lot of Kunari. Our biggest interaction with the Kunari was in Dragon Age 2, where they were seen as, as villains. So I think it's going to be kind of cool to play Inquisition as a Kunari and see things from that perspective. Uh, before I bore you guys with more lore, we do have one more thing that I want to read, and it's about the Breach. As you can see, again, there's just so much lore to this game, and myself personally, I love diving into to every single Codex entry. So let's read this last one before we get back to the gameplay. What does it mean to pierce the veil, that which separates our world from the realm of dreams and demons? For the average man and woman, it is a frightening thought to consider just how fragile this separation actually is. The veil is not a physical curtain, nor a structure limited to a particular place. It is everywhere. It is in their home, in the streets where they walk, in farmers' fields, as well as remote mountain vales. At any moment it could be torn to shreds, allowing demons and other hoarders to flood into our world like water through a burst dam. Known lore tells us that small rifts can be sealed, but what about a large one? What if some catastrophic magical event created a rift so large and horrific it weakened the integrity of the veil as a whole? Such a breach would threaten our entire world, turning concerns about occasional demonic intrusion into a charming anecdote compared to the monsters we would then face. If there's anything to be done, any reason we should look at magic with fear, it is for that possibility more than ever. So as you can see, that's why everyone's freaking out so much, because that giant thing up in the sky right there is, uh, is a big breach, so 
Let's keep heading towards the green, shall we? Oh god, there's like meteors falling from the sky too. This is, oh my god, a true apocalypse situation. Cassandra, it hurts. My hand, it's burning. The pulses are coming faster now. That's, that's it. The larger it. the breach grows, okay. the more rifts appear, the more demons we face. How did I survive the blast? They said you stepped out of a rift, then fell unconscious. They say a woman was in the rift behind you. No one knows who she was. My ghostly Everything savior. Everything in the valley was laid waste, including the Temple of Sacred Ashes. I suppose you'll see soon enough. All right, well, for now, we shall keep moving forward. Whoa. Uh-oh. Like it's time for our first taste of battle. All right, basic attack. Press R or left mouse button to attack. So one thing about the Dragon Age games is that the combat has evolved in every entry. Every entry's combat feels different, and so you can kind of pick and choose which one is your favorite. Between Origins and Dragon Age 2, I actually like Dragon Age 2's combat so, better because it was a bit more fluid. Drop so we'll your see weapon. how Inquisition holds up, because as I mentioned before, uh, it has been a while since I played this game, so I can't even quite remember. Um, I'll say I need this weapon, though. There's demons! A demon attacked me. What was I supposed to do? You don't need to fight. Are you saying it won't happen again? <sighs> You're right. You don't need a staff, but you should have one. I cannot protect you. I should remember you did not attempt to run. All right, well, that's good. Take Press 9 to consume Make a potion a and heal the face. controlled character. Where are all your soldiers? At the Got it. I love how I just fight. toss the vial onto on the ground own. somewhere. Oof. This ice looks a little sketchy, but it held us when we fell from that bridge up above, so I guess it's okay. RIP to that guy. Um, ooh, lemons! Do you want a snack, Cassandra? <laughs> just kidding. All right, let's keep moving forward. Just got our per first piece of loot, the Rashvine Vitar. This strange Kunari face paint is created from deadly poison, fatal when applied to anyone other than a Kunari, whose unique physiology somehow not only neutralizes its effect, but also allows the paint's magic to harden the flesh and provide other protections. Well, that's pretty cool. We'll put that on. And uh, apparently we have a mercenary coat that is one point of defense higher than my current mercenary coat, so we'll put that on too. Abilities consume mana and stamina for powerful combat effects. Most abilities require time to pass before there, reuse. Watch out! If we flank them, we may gain the advantage. What? Where do you? Oh, all the way up there, Cassandra. Your eyes are good, girl. I didn't even. I did not even see the enemies you were referring to. But okay, I got it. Here's our target. We use one of our abilities. This one appears to be some up sort of lightning hill. spell. It attacks from a distance. So right away, the combat feels, um, how should I put it? It has a greater distance to it. Also, Cassandra, thank you so much for your help, girl. Really, huge help. Uh, <laughs> like, I feel like I couldn't attack enemies from this far away in the other games. Now, it's in saying that, perhaps that was because I only ever played a, a melee character in the other titles. And now I have the distance of a mage, but it definitely feels, again, that we have greater combat distance. So far, in fact, that Cassandra decides that she can stay all the way back there. Thank you, Cassandra.
flash fire. You can ignite and panic a foe. Nice. Panic foes can attack, but will snap out if something. Couldn't read fast enough. At least Cassandra helped on that one. You are no match for us, Wraiths. Alright. Yeah, so far, and I mean, we're literally f five minutes into the game. So far, combat feels very fun. It feels like a mixture of Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age 2, in that the animations are definitely more fluid, but it has more of a top-down, almost tactical feel to it that Dragon Age 2's combat didn't have. So we'll see how it goes for the, uh, for the rest of the game. Another thing I should mention is that when I played the game previously, I actually played it on console. I played it on PS4. Uh, so this time around, we are playing on PC, which does make things a little bit different, obviously, in terms of controls. Um, you'll have to let me know down in the comment section below, do you guys normally play on PC or console? What class do you guys normally play as? I'm very interested to know uh, what, the, what the consensus is, if you will. Hello, we are here to help! I mean, I would be here to help if I was actually targeting an enemy. There we go, that's better. Oh yeah! Alright, oh look who it is! A familiar face! What did you do? Nothing. The credit is yours. I did that? I closed that thing? How? Whatever magic opened the breach in the sky also placed that mark upon your hand. I theorized the mark might be able to close the rifts that have opened in the breach's wake. And it seems I was correct. Meaning it could also close the breach itself? Possibly. It seems you hold the key to our salvation. Good to know. Here I thought we'd be ass deep in demons forever. <laughs> Good to see you, Varric. Varric Tethras. Look how much Rogue taller I am than Varric. <laughs> Occasionally unwelcome. So Varric is a companion from Dragon Age 2, of course, a returning face for those of you guys who've played that game or watched my playthrough. You're with the Chantry? Are you with the Chantry, or...? <laughs> Was that a serious question? Technically, I'm a prisoner, just like you. I brought you here to tell your story to the Divine. Clearly, that is no longer necessary. Yet, here I am. Lucky for you, considering current events. Pleased to meet you. It's good to meet you, Varric. You may reconsider that stance in time. Oh, I'm sure we'll become great friends in the Valley, Chuckles. Absolutely not. Your help is appreciated, Varric, but- Have you been in the valley lately, Seeker? Your soldiers aren't in control anymore. You need me. Ugh. <laughs> My name is Solus, if there are to be introductions. I am pleased to see you still live. He means I kept that mark from killing you while you slept. You know about the mark? You seem to know a great deal about it all. Like you. Solus is an apostate. Technically, all mages are now apostates, Cassandra. You beat me to it, Solus. That's what I was just about to say. To you can't be an apostate if there's no Far circle, can you? experience of any circle mage, I came to offer whatever help I can give with the breach. If it is not closed, we are all doomed, regardless of origin. I had no choice. I had less choice in volunteering to help. Cassandra, you should know. The magic involved here is unlike any I have seen. Your prisoner is a mage, but I find it difficult to imagine any mage having such power. Understood. We must get to the forward camp quickly. If nothing else, it seems well, like Cassandra is quite reasonable. Also, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm noticing some major texture clipping on my, both my outfit and Solus's outfit, so... Apologies for that. Line. Obviously, the this uh, game did come out as quickly. of this recording almost eight years ago. So uh, there, there may be some, some technical issues here and there, but hopefully it won't be too much to interrupt our experience.
In terms of technical issues, if you are wondering, we are playing with basically all settings on Ultra to hopefully have the nicest looking Let's Play that we can, so hopefully that, uh, that lives up to my word. Ooh, this guy had an Acolyte Fire Staff on him, which presumably will be an upgrade from whatever I'm currently using. Uh, only by one, but that's fine. One point is one point, am I right? So, now we have a full party, which is nice. And, uh, we can head forward. Two mages, a warrior, and a rogue. Pretty good party composition, actually. Now, hopefully Solus can spec as more of a healer. Because I definitely want to be shooting lightning bolts and fire out of my hands. So I would appreciate it if he could probably take, take control head. of the healing. Glad Let's see how this battle now, goes. Alright. I have the high ground! Let's look at tactical camera mode, which helps you better evaluate nearby enemies and plan your strategy. Aha. Okay, cool. So this is a lot like Origins, this top-down view. Pretty good for all three of us to have the high ground while Cassandra gets up close and personal. I'd love to see it. Pew pew pew! This is fun! The combat feels, like I said, both fluid yet tactical, which is a great, uh, a great combination. Alright, that's our first battle as a crew finished. Can I climb down over this hill? Oh, I sure can. Cool. Alright, well, I want to investigate this little cabin. I know there's a giant rift in the sky, guys, but look, a cabin! Can we go inside? We sure can. Hello? Anyone home? No, just this, uh, this bear? Ooh, and loot. Don't mind if I do. No, stop lighting things on fire. I want you to loot this. There we go. 46 gold. A silver bracelet. And, uh, that's it. R.I.P. to these people that we just robbed. We do have another cabin over here, but it appears to be a little, uh, on fire. Anything here? Can I go in here? Yeah, I can! I mean, I am a fire mage. I guess fire shouldn't hurt me that much. Either that or I'm just a badass. One or the other. Anyway, we will take all this loot. I feel less bad about taking it from the burning building. We're really saving it if you want to look at it that way. Saving the loot from disaster. Ed Kunari and Kirkwall. A whole boatload of them. They were your typical cheerless sword, then they tried to take over the city and kill everyone. But I'm guessing you don't actually follow the Kuhn, do you? You're Talvashoth. Worried I'll convert you? And afraid I'll try to convert you to the Kuhn? Well, you haven't recited a single quote from the Prophet Koslu yet. So unless you're trying to stay on the Seeker's good side, I'd say that's pretty telling. <laughs> yeah, Varric probably doesn't have the best memories of the Kunari after his experiences in Kirkwall. But don't worry, Varric, I'm one of the cool ones! Ouch, this thing that hurts. Sound good. I think that was the sound of my skin burning, Varric. As you can imagine, it's probably pretty painful, so let's hurry up and get so, to this. Are hurt. you innocent? I don't remember what happened. That'll get you every time. Should have spun a story. That's what you would have done. It's more believable and less prone to result in premature execution. <laughs> oh, Varric. I love Varric. He's, he's fun. It's nice to have him in the party right away. And so far, we've already encountered two instances of miscellaneous party dialogue, which is good. I'm always happy when that triggers. ourselves at the forward camp. We're almost there. If I know Liliana, and I'd like to say I do, because we romanced her in Dragon Age Origins, then a few little demons isn't gonna keep her now. Ah! 
fade rifts are caused by weaknesses in the veil. Disrupting a rift with your mark will cause damage to nearby demons. Alright. Let's try to cause damage to it, can we? First we're gonna have to take care of the these couple of demons. You can tank that guy, Cassandra. I can go disrupt the rift. Disrupt! Nice! Rift closed! That actually got us to level two as well! The rift is gone! Open the gate! Alright, we made it! Open those gates! Woo! Hi, everybody! Ooh, a supply cache. Refill potions at supply caches. Don't mind if I do. Speaking of Liliana, there she is. Ah, here they come. You made it. Chancellor Roderick, this is... I know who she is. As Grand Chancellor of the Chantry, I hereby order you to take this criminal to Valroyo to face execution. Oh, good. Order me? You are a glorified clerk, a bureaucrat. Ooh, ooh, you tell him, Cassandra. And you are a thug, but a thug who supposedly serves the Chantry. We serve the most holy, Chancellor. As you well know. Justinia is dead! We must elect a replacement and obey her orders on the matter. So no one's in charge here. So none of you are actually in charge here. You killed everyone who was in charge! Ouch. Call a retreat, Seeker. Our position here is hopeless. We can stop this before it's too late. How? You won't survive long enough to reach the temple, even with all your soldiers. We must get to the temple. It's the quickest route. But not the safest. Our forces can charge as a distraction while we go through the mountains. We lost contact with an entire squad on that path. It's too risky. Listen to me. Abandon this now, before more lives are lost. How do you think we should proceed? You're asking for my opinion? Now you're asking me what I think. You have the mark. And you are the one we must keep alive. Since we cannot agree on our own. Alright, so we have two options here. Either to charge with the soldiers. A careful, sustained assault. Soldiers will stand with you to ensure arrival. Scouts in the pass may be lost. Or we can take the mountain path. Fast, but indirect. Soldiers will act as a distraction elsewhere. The problem will be addressed sooner, but there may be casualties. Um, well, I think, personally, the longer this rift is open, the more casualties there are going to be. Plus, Liliana suggested this path. We love us some Liliana around here. So, let's take the mountain path. Use the mountain path. Work together. You all know what's at stake. Liliana, bring everyone left in the valley. Everyone. On your head be the consequences, Seeker. Alright, here we are at the Mountain Pass. This is the plan of action we've decided to take. Now we have to try to reach the temple going through this path. Before we climb up the ladder, we did get a few more codex entries about the characters we've encountered so far, including that absolute gem of a man we just met, High Chancellor Roderick. There are some who claim men have no place in the Chantry, beyond the lowest rank of scholarly brothers, and those who take their place amongst the Templars. It is not true. This is an organization spanning seven nations, from the smallest village Chantry to the Grand Cathedral in Val Royo. It takes more than sermons to keep it alive. There is an invisible army at work ensuring meals are delivered, repairs are made, and faithful attended to. And much of it done by Chantry brothers, like myself. The position 
of High Chancellor places a man beside the Most Holy. I control who is permitted audience, handle her correspondence, deliver her word to Thetis, and serve as her advisor on matters which may be mundane but cannot be disregarded. If I have influence, let it be said it is something I use sparingly, if at all. This is a task to which I devote myself with solemn, solemnity. I and my fellows bear a burden so that others are free to guide the spirits of Thetis unencumbered. So, High Chancellor Roderick is basically Divine Justidia's manservant, let's be real. <laughs> then we have a codex entry about Solus, Cassandra. I understand our first order of business must be to investigate this bizarre breach in the sky and protect people from the demons descending. While my search continues, I wish to draw your attention to a new arrival at our camp, an elven apostate calling himself Solus. Solus entered the camp voluntarily, surrendering his staff to Chantry forces without protest. He is not Dalish and says that he has never been part of the Circle, claiming instead to have studied magic peacefully on his own, particularly magic tied to the Fade. While I suspect you will be reluctant to accept the help of an apostate, Solus did come to us freely. Witnesses saw him in a nearby village at the time of the blast, so he was likely not responsible for what happened at the Conclave. However, he has described the effects of the breach in enough detail to convince me that he knows more about the Fade than anyone else present. Solus has requested permission to study the lone survivor and one of the smaller rifts in hopes of finding a way to seal the breach. He has correctly guessed that it is growing and believes it will destroy the entire world unless we find a way to stop it. Unless you object, I will allow him his studies, under proper observation, of course, from Liliana. Finally, a codex entry about the man himself, Varric Tethras. There's power in stories, that's all history is, the best tales, the ones that last. Might as well be mine. Varric Tethras of the... Dwarven Mort Varric Tethras of the Dwarven Merchant Guild of Kirkwall is famous, or infamous, for two things. His books and his association with the Champion of Kirkwall. After the Templars and Circles broke away from the Chantry, Divine Justinia V sent her agents to Kirkwall, where the roots of the war began, in search of answers. The Champion had long since disappeared, but Varric had written a book on his friend's involvement in the destruction of the Kirkwall Chantry, and the left and right hands of the Divine located him with surprising ease. They captured and interrogated him, then brought him to the Conclave to give his testimony to the Divine in person, but fate decreed that he would never meet her. So normally I have the hide helmet option toggled in RPGs, but I realized with my horns I can't actually wear helmets. Instead, we can show this cool face paint that we have equipped, the Vitar. So I just went into the options and toggled back on uh, show helmets, so we'll be able to see our face paintings now, which I think looks pretty cool. And not as distracting as like a full face helmet. The tunnel should be just ahead. The path to the temple lies just beyond it. Got it. What manner of tunnel is this? A mine? Part of an old mining complex. These mountains are full of such paths. And your missing soldiers are in there somewhere? Along with whatever has detained them. We shall see soon enough. Yeah, after we finish climbing all these ladders. We are very high up here. Wow. This must be the mine. Look at this view. Holy moly, it must be very cold up here. Oh, and there's monsters. We'll look at the view later first. Guys, I need some help. I think I see daylight. Okay, it was just a brief trip into the mountains, although here are some dead bodies. Yes, we found the soldiers. So it is that definitively just as spooky them. outside. So the others could be holed up ahead. Our priority must be the breach. Unless we seal it soon, no one is safe. I'm leaving that to our Kunari friend here. Alright, well maybe we can kill two birds with one stone, guys. Let's see. Maybe we'll find the soldiers up ahead. We are getting very close to the rift. Speak of the devil, I found the soldiers! Alright, let me see if I can disrupt this rift long enough to help them out. Boom! Alright. Is that it? Lieutenant, you're alive. This doesn't look very closed. Oh, that's because it's not! It's back open again, I was gonna say! The rift seems to be leaking a bit. But that's because it was. Alright, we got more monsters. Ouch. No. 
now. Can I actually close it? This one took a few, uh, few attempts. It wasn't as easy as the first one we encountered. Seal that up tight. All right. Sealed, as before. You are becoming quite proficient at this. Let's hope it works on the big one. Thank the Maker you finally arrived, Lady Cassandra. I don't think we could have held out much longer. Thank our prisoner, Lieutenant. She insisted we come this way. The prisoner? Then you... All in a day's work. Closing rifts and saving soldiers. It's what I do. Then you have my sincere gratitude. The way into the valley behind us is clear for the moment. Go, while you still can. At once. Quickly, let's move! The path ahead appears to be clear of demons as well. Let's hurry before that changes. Down the ladder. That's the way to the temple. They sure love ladders down here. Oh no! Oh wow! <laughs> well, I missed that ladder, but I seem okay. Let's see if we can actually use this one. Careful! Aha! <laughs> All right, we missed one ladder, but so we are getting closer. So fade don't just accidentally happen, right? I don't think so. If enough magic is brought to bear, it is possible. Oh, never mind. But there are easier ways to make things explode. That is true. We will consider how this happened once the immediate danger is past. We're almost there now. We are in what appears to be the giant crater where the temple, temple once stood. What's left of it. That is where you walked out of the Fade and our soldiers found you. Uh, and who they are these guys? Was in the rift behind you. Oh god. No one knows who she was. Oh god. What? I didn't do this. This is cr Look at all these people just frozen in place. All right. A quick stop into the Codex here, because we actually have a lore entry about the Temple of Sacred Ashes. According to legend, the Sacred Ashes of Andraste were carried out of the Imperium by Havar, disciple of Our Lady. Wounded by Tevinter soldiers when he tried to stop Andraste's capture, Havar was too late in coming to Minrathus to stop the execution. All he found was her ashes, left out in the elements. As soon as Havard touched them, Andraste appeared in a vision. Rise, she said, Aegis of the Faith, the Maker shall never forget you as long as I remember. The Aegis of the Faith, so named by our prophet herself, stood at her word and found his wounds healed and his spirit renewed. He gathered the ashes of Andraste and returned to the lands of the Alamari tribes, which are now Ferelden. It's said that Andraste's song led him to a holy site where Havard and his followers built a temple to house her remains. There, the legend ends. For centuries, men searched for the Temple of Sacred Ashes, finding only rumors and tall tales. Chantry scholars concluded that there was no temple. There were no sacred ashes. It was all a myth, allegory intended to inspire and feed the fire of faith. Then the hero Ferelden came. That's us in Dragon Age Origins. Seeking to cure a dying Arl with the miraculous power of the ashes, the hero, with the help of renowned scholar brother Ferdinand Genetivi, traced the steps of the ancients and came to a remote ruin high in the Frostback Mountains. There the urn of sacred ashes waited as the legend said it would. After the triumph of the righteous over the fifth blight, the temple's discovery was shared with the world. Much to our dismay, however, by the time our soldiers arrived at the temple, the urn had disappeared. To this day, we do not know who took them or why. All that is certain is that it was the Maker's will. Interesting. The hero Ferelden did not share the discovery with the world, and Brother Genetivi, whose research made it possible, had disappeared without a trace. Truth, however, will always out, and rumors circulated about the cause of Arlie Mangiran's miraculous recovery. Agents of the Chantries investigated claims about the urn of sacred ashes and were eventually led, as the hero had been led, to the temple. By the time our soldiers reached it, however, the urn was nowhere to be found. Though the ashes were gone, the temple itself stood, and has since become a source of hope for the faithful. If the Grand Cathedral is the beating heart of our Chantry, then the Temple of Sacred Ashes is her soul. Well, that's awkward, because the Temple of Sacred Ashes just got blown up, so... R.I.P. to the soul. Back to what we were doing. Let's go into the remains of the Temple of Sacred Ashes and close this rift. Is a long way. 
Liliana, have your men take up positions around the temple. This is your chance to end this. Are you ready? I'll try. I'll try. But I don't know if I can reach that, much less close it. No. This rift was the first, and it is the key. Seal it, and perhaps we seal the breach. Then let's find a way down, and be careful. Now is the hour of our victory. Ah, uh, spooky. Bring forth the sacrifice. Anyone else hear this voice? Okay, you are. Not just me. That's good. Person who created the breach. I was worried it was just me hearing it, but it's a lot better if everyone else hears it too. Do you know this stuff Ooh, is red Ooh, look at this, Seeker. red lyrium. I see it, Beric. But what's it doing here? Magic could have drawn on lyrium beneath the temple, corrupted it. <sighs> it's evil. Whatever you do, don't touch it. Beric knows that firsthand <laughs> after what happened to his brother in Dragon Age 2. Red Larian is not Help good. Me. That is divine Justinia's voice. Something suspicious is happening here. Let's go see if we can figure out what it is. Alright, made it. Whoop. Your voice. Most holy called out to you, but what's going on here? Run while you can! Warn them! We have an intruder. Slay the canary. There. Who attacked? And the divine is she? Was this vision true? What are we seeing? I don't remember. Echoes of what happened here. The fade bleeds into this place. This rift is not sealed, but it is closed, albeit temporarily. I believe that with the mark, the rift can be opened, and then sealed properly and safely. However, opening the rift will likely attract attention from the other side. That means demons! Stand ready! Alright, let's do this thing. Whoa! That's a big one. No! Alright, let's get rid of this big guy, shall we? Everyone, magic, swords, bow and arrow, whatever you got, throw it at this thing. That's the plan, Cassandra. Can I disrupt the rift? Will that help? Perhaps. Let's try that. Magic hand powers! Oh, wait. Magic hand powers! Go! Yes! That did work! No. Alright. Everyone, blast it! It's a pride demon, it appears. I lit it on fire. Hopefully so that'll help. Let's electrocute it as well. Nope, it's immune to that. Oh no! He has friends! Get rid of the minions! 
minions! I need to get out of the fray. I'm right in the middle and I'm getting beat up. Back up a little bit. Take out this shade. His armor is back again, so I think we're gonna have to disrupt this rift another time. Hold him off, guys, while I use my magical hand powers. There we go. Back at it. Get some hits in. Solus, do you have any healing magic? Because it looks like our team is pretty low on HP, including you. see here. Can I get Solus to heal or anything? I gotta be honest, I don't fully understand- oh yeah, here we go. I can get everybody to heal if I just go into tactical mode, click on all of them, get them to drink a potion, and then back to real fun. Alright. We'll get the hang of this, folks. Armor is back. Let me drink a potion and disrupt that rift one more time. Should hopefully be the final time. Alright guys, give them all you got! Dead. It looks like I'm in a very fancy bed, so in fact, looks like my situation has improved. Where am I? Oh. Hi. I didn't know you were awake. I swear. It's all right. Don't worry about it. I only. Oh. I beg your forgiveness and your blessing. I am but a humble servant. What happened while you we were unconscious? Haven, my lady. They say you saved us. The breach stopped growing, just like the mark on your hand. Oh, that's still there. That's unfortunate. It's all anyone has talked about for the last three days. Three days? Then we're safe. Oh, then the danger is over. The breach is still in the sky, but that's what they say. I'm certain Lady Cassandra would want to know you've wakened. She said, at once. And where is she? In the Chantry, with the Lord Chancellor, at once, she said. I feel like her scared reaction makes even more sense since I'm at Kunari. She's like, oh my god. But alright, there we go, guys. That was the first main mission, the prologue, if you will, to Dragon Age Inquisition. Clearly, we have only scratched the surface of this beautiful game. I plan on doing as much content as I can, so I imagine this series will last for quite a few episodes. But hopefully episode one was enough of a hook to get you guys coming back for more. So until next time, everybody, I will see you back here for some more Dragon Age Inquisition. Thank you all so much for watching.